in this video we're going to talk about uh, log in runtime right so sometimes if you look at the other people's algorithm they uh, talk about this kind of a log in runtime right so all the examples that we have looked at so far are either o n or o n square right and uh, in that um, in this particular plot we looked at the lots of examples. One of them, the one that's with the smallest runtime, is O log n. Right? How does the log n um, come from? Where exactly does log n runtime come from? Right? How do we actually get a log n runtime? This looks really kind of um, a weird, weird function. Right? And all the examples that we have looked at so far, for example, these four loops, that's going to iterate through each of the elements uh, of an array and the problem size is pretty much determined by the size of the array and then um, and then and then depending upon how many levels of loops that you are having so you're going to have for, for a nested loop you're going to have uh, o n square right so if you have a, like, like a triple nested loop three levels of nested loop you're going to have o n cube right and then if you have like four levels of loop, it's O n uh, fourth power, right? So, 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 how how exactly do you get a O log n runtime, right? So today let's look at the, an example, and then that's 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 a quite a typical problem uh, in algorithms. It's called a binary search. So suppose you have a array. Here we call it nums here, right? Suppose you have an array and every element inside of that array is kind of sorted. So it goes from like a smallest element in the first uh, position to the largest element of the of of uh, of the last element inside of this particular array. And then in this sorted array, you are trying to find the index of the target number. Right, that's the target. So, so for this binary search function, you have two inputs. One is the array, the sorted array, and then uh, the second input is the target number that you want to try to find its position for. Right, and then the position are supposed to start from zero to the end of the array. Right, um, and if you sort of do, if you cannot find this particular target number, you are supposed to return a minus one. Right. So 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 how this binary search algorithm is written, right? Um, so here you have some checks. You have to do some checks in order to make sure that your your code is kind of robust enough to your your code won't fail in certain special cases, right? Suppose suppose the the array that's used as the input is 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 empty. It's a null array, or the length equals to zero, then the target is not going to be inside of this empty array right so you must return minus one immediately so you don't have to sort of go through any kind of search right and then because the array is sorted so if the target is smaller than the first number of the array the first number of the array is supposed to be the smallest right because it's sorted already so if the target is smaller than the first number then or or the target is larger than the last element of the number you also return minus one immediately because you know that the target cannot be inside of this particular array right you don't have to do any kind of search and then and then if if uh, if uh, if both conditions are kind of a uh, are false then you have to actually do the search inside of the array now so how how are you going to do the do the search right you set up two um, markers so basically two pointers the start pointer points to the first element of the of the array and then the end index points to the last element of the array which is the length of the array subtract one right because it's a zero based index the body of the the body of the function the most uh, time consuming part of this punk function is actually inside this while loop it's a loop so 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 far all loops that we have looked at so far is a for loop, right? And then for for loop the number of iterations is kind of fixed. 
it's uh, it's um, it's um, the number of uh, iterations is it, kind of fixed at the beginning of the loop, right? So so if you look at the, all the examples that we looked at so far, i goes from zero to the end of the array, j goes from i plus one to the end of the array. So you know in advance that how many iterations you have to actually um, go through, right? But for while loop, it's not true. That's not true, right? You don't really know how many iterations you have to go through. Right, it depends upon what the target number actually is, right? And it de also depends upon what's going to be the numbers inside of this nums array, right? You only know the condition for stopping the search. What's going to be this condition for stopping the search? Right? These two pointers are going to be moved around. This this start pointer are going to be moved towards the end of the array, and then this end pointer is going to be moved backwards to the front of the array during this kind of while loop, right? So the condition for stopping the loop is when start plus one is smaller than, no, is larger than or equal to end. So the condition here is for continuing the iterations, right? So if you want to stop the iterations, it's going to be the, 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 the opposite of this particular condition. That's the start plus one larger than or equal to end. So when start plus one is smaller than end, you want to keep iterating. Right. And then let's look at the body of the while loop. So the first statement in the while loop is you compute a mid position, middle position. The middle position is the start position plus the end position subtract to the start position divided by two. Right. So end subtract the start. That's that's more like uh, the total number of elements or the, to uh, the, 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 the position difference or the interval between the end and the start, right? You divide by two. You divide the interval by two, and then add the interval to the start. In this case, you get the middle position, the location of the middle point between the start and the end, right? And then you look at the value of the, of the, of the, of the, of the number inside of the array that's at the middle position. Don't forget, all the numbers in the numbers array is sorted, right? You look at the value in the numbers of area at the mid position, and compare it with the target, right? So, so if the number is larger than or equal to target, which means what? Which means what? Which means the target must exist. The target, if it can be found, it must exist between the start and the midpoint, right? And in this case, what you have to do is to actually move the end point, to move the end pointer to the location of the mid pointer, mid location. So basically, you're just doing an assignment to assign the mid to the end pointer, right? So otherwise, otherwise, which means what? Otherwise means what? Otherwise means the value at the mid position is smaller than the target. Which means what? Well, if the target can be found, it must exist between the midpoint and the end point, or the position that's pointed to by the end, right? So if that's the case, you move the start pointer to the midpoint, uh, to the mid position, right? By doing this kind of assignment, and then you check the condition again. See if start plus one is smaller than end. And then you decide if you want to continue, right? If you want to continue, you repeat this calculation to compute the mid position between the new start point and the new end point, right? And then compare the value again, and then repeat everything, right? So, so when this condition becomes false, the while loop is kind of uh, completed, right? And at this point, at this point, if if you have this kind of a, um, result, then you can return the start, right? Start is the location where you want to try to find the target, and you return that. And then, if the end position is actually equal to target, you return the end, right? And then, otherwise, otherwise, you just return minus one. You can you cannot find the target in the in the array, right? So 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 all those all those statements, all those if statements, 
or the, these two assignment statements are just O1, right? If you are doing a big O analysis, O1 is like constant time. Last time I was saying that you have to drop the non-dominant term, right? The same is true for these two if statements. They are constant time, right? So, so these are not dominant terms. The dominant term is actually inside this while loop because you don't really know how many iterations you have to go through, right? Each iteration has to perform all those work. Right, so that's the the dominant term, right? So you have to sort of, in order to actually compute the runtime to get an idea about the the big old runtime, you have to sort of determine what's gonna be the number of iterations you have to go through for this while loop, right? So so that's that's um, that's um, that can be actually computed. The number of iterations can be actually computed. Suppose we, the array has like 16 numbers, right? Suppose the array has 16 numbers. For iteration 0, that's before we actually start the while loop, we have 16 numbers inside of our array, right? All 16 numbers are sorted from small to big, right? So, so, so for the first iteration, we're looking at the starting, the starting pointer points to 0, right? And then the point to the zeroth position to the beginning of the array, and then the end pointer points to the 15th position. That's uh, the, the last element of the array, right? And then what's going to be the middle position? Right? The middle position should be at location about 7, right? So, 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 so for the first equation, we actually narrow down the search range from like 16 elements to like 8 elements. Right. So, so if the target is is a, it, we we compare the target to the midpoint of the array, basically, right? So, if if the target is um is is smaller than the midpoint, then all we have to do is to search the left half of the array, right? And then if the target is larger than the mid mid location, then all we have to do is to search the right side of the array, right? So, so in this case, we, in this case, after the first iteration, ha we have narrowed down the search range from like 16 numbers to like eight numbers, right? And then we do the same thing again. We narrow down the search range to like four numbers instead of eight numbers, right? So every time, if for every iteration, we basically cut the cut the cut the total number of search uh, total number of uh, possible ranges to like a, a half of the previous uh, number. Right. Suppose we start with the 16 numbers. For, this, for the first iteration, that's, we have eight numbers left. Right. For the second iteration, we have four numbers left. And then for the third iteration, we have two numbers left. And then for the uh, fourth iteration, we have only one number left. Right. So if we start with 16 numbers, what we have to do is to do like four iterations. Right. If you actually look at this side of the equation, we start with two to the fourth power. And then we get to like two to the third power, two to the second power, two to the first power, and two to the zeroth power. When we get down to like two to the zeroth power, we have finished the while loop, right? So basically, basically what we are actually, basically what we are actually trying to do is actually suppose we look at the process from the bottom to the top, right? We start with two to the zeroth power, and every time we have to multiply two, right? And when we multiply two to the fourth power, uh, the four times, we get to the length of the array. That's 16, right? So the number of iterations is basically the, the power of two. What's going to be the exponent, right? So, so now can we actually solve this particular problem, right? So two to the fourth power equals to 16. Then, 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 then the, the number of iterations is going to be what? So, so in practice, in practice, we know 16, so that's our big N, right? That's our uh, capital N, right? 2 is a, sort of a, a constant, it doesn't really change. The only unknown parameter is X. The, the only, uh, only non unknown parameter, that's uh, sort of the, the number of iterations, right? The total number of iterations. The 4 here is something that we, we do not know, right? So how do we actually get this particular number? We take the log on both sides. We take a two-based log on both sides, right? If we take a two-based log on both sides, then that's 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 x, right? X. 
log 2 and 2 to the power of x, right? So if we take the 2 base the log, the left hand side is x, right? And then the right hand side is log 2 capital N, right? So log 2, 16 is going to give you 4. So the runtime is supposed to be, uh, so for array of capital N, this, this many elements, the runtime is supposed to be proportional to log 2A, right? But in practice, you are not seeing people actually write the base of the log, right? In practice, if you look at other people's um, discussions, it's always log N, log N. You don't see people saying log 2N, right? They are neglecting the base of the log. So what exactly is the base of the log then? Right. It turns out that the base of the log doesn't really matter. Suppose you are trying to actually get the log 10 of n, right? So the log 10 of n actually equals to log 10 of 2 multiplied with log 2 of n. Right. So, so log 10 of 2 is what? Log 10 of 2 is actually a constant. It's a constant number. So when we do this kind of big O analysis, it's a constant number multiplied log n or log 2n. This constant number doesn't really matter. You have to drop the constant, right? The same is true for any kind of base. Suppose you have a base that's A, arbitrary base A, right? So log A n equals to log A2 times log 2n, right? Log A2 for arbitrary A is always a constant. So the base of the log doesn't really matter anymore, right? So in this case, to reduce confusion, people just say it's log n, right? Because the base doesn't really matter. Even the base is like 10 or something. All you have to do is to actually multiply with a constant, and constant is always dropped in the big O notation, right? So for this kind of binary search, this particular while loop is going to involve a log 2 n this many iterations and n is the length of the numbers right so this is one example where you can actually get a log n runtime there are other situations where you can actually get a log n runtime right and uh, uh, if we have time we can sort of talk about other kind of situations but this kind of a binary search situation is one of those uh, uh, typical situations where you can actually get a log n runtime and the log n runtime is better than linear runtime right and in practice um, if you see a log n runtime it's usually coming from this kind of binary search operation right every time you cut the range by half right and it turns out to be a very very efficient algorithm right it doesn't actually get more efficient than this kind of a operation this kind of binary search operation uh, in practice. Right.